okay now let's talk about these rules if we want to have a good mesh and a good mesh quality for triangular mesh the shape of triangles must be close to equilateral right so for example if you consider this mesh element in general this is l1 the length of this edge this is l2 the length of this edge and this is l3 we have a definition a parameter for this mesh element this parameter is defined as the aspect ratio right aspect ratio is defined as the maximum of l1 l2 and l3 divided by minimum of l1 l2 and l3 in this case we know that l1 is the maximum one and l3 is the minimum one in our example is l1 and this is l3 so for equilateral triangle the aspect ratio is equal to one right and when we have non-equilateral element we have this definition when the element aspect ratio is high we don't have a good mesh quality right we will have a good mesh quality when the aspect ratio is close to one right so this is important also let's see the same parameter in the ANSYS Maxwell software in the ANSYS Maxwell software suppose we have this region okay let's set the x size equal to 10 and y size equal to 10 millimeters okay in mesh initial mesh setting you can see these parameters right if i here if i select the classic mesh and manual settings you can see this parameter aspect ratio right so when you want to generate a fine mesh you should limit the value of aspect ratio so for example you can set it equal to 3 or equal to 5 right to put a higher limit on the aspect ratio okay the best one is when the aspect ratio for each mesh element is equal to one and as much as we increase this parameter we will have a bad mesh right the quality of mesh reduces also for quadrilateral mesh the shape of quadrilaterals must be close to a square the same definition applies here what is the next rule nodes must appear at source points right for example uh, if you have this problem you have a solution region and here you have electric charge density it's good if you have more mesh nodes right in this region when you have electric charge distribution here and here is empty space so because the variation of the electric field is high in this region it's good if you have more mesh nodes in this region the finite element mesh must accurately represent the geometrical domain of the problem right the discretization error should be low enough in regions when the solution is expected to have large variations the elements must be small right because if we want to capture the variation of the field when 
the gradient of the electric potential is high, we should use a fine mesh. Avoid elements with a very large aspect ratios. Right. Number of nodes is in ascending order from one. We, uh, we did it and we assigned proper node index to each mesh point. So because uh, the, the, the numbering of the mesh nodes directly affects the bandwidth of the global metrics. What is this? You know, we had this global metrics here. So in general, we will have something like this. We have non-zero elements, non-zero elements here, non-zero elements, right? So the bandwidth is actually this distance in global metrics. And when this bandwidth is low, we can solve the global metrics easier. So if you want to have a low bandwidth global uh, metrics, you shouldn't assign indices like this. For example, suppose this is a mesh nodes. You should uh, start in this order. One, two, three, five, and so on. So as you can see here, indices of neighborhood nodes are close to each other. But if you do indexing in this order, for example, one, two, three, five, six, so you will have this kind of stiffness metrics and the bandwidth will be high. That is not good, right? So we should consider this important point. When we generate finite element mesh for two dimensional or three dimensional problems, right? So, what is the next? There must be no overlap of elements, right? Right. For example, this mesh node is not valid. For example, if this is one mesh element and this is another mesh element, we shouldn't have any overlap between the mesh elements. The next is an interior node, non-boundary node, must belong at least to uh, three elements. Right. If this is boundary, and this is an internal node, this node at least must be shared between three elements, right? Otherwise, we have a non-conformal mesh, right? For example, this kind of mesh. This point is shared between two mesh elements, right? But this is non-conformal, on well this is conformal mesh you can search about non-conformal and conformal mesh to learn more conformal mesh is easier to formulate and program so uh, this is the last item right an interior node must belong to at least three elements to have a conformal mesh so for Generation of the two-dimensional mesh, you should consider these items, right? Even we can calculate the aspect ratio and we can check the mesh quality for our generated mesh. This example was simple and later we will consider more complex geometries right arbitrary shapes and we will learn how we can generate a mesh for arbitrary solution regions right so 
Do you have any question about uh, these items? No, it's clear, Ali. The points are clear. Okay.